said, yeah, I trust you. He said, I said, but ain't nothing down here but your arms. He said, then trust me, son. And so that's what I did. And every time, with the exception of one, he called me. <laughs> all right. So if you trust in God today, I want to thank you all. If you want to put it in the blank, put your hand up. I want you to put your hand up no matter what. I want you to say this, because your greatest offering is you. opportunity it is to be in your house and to be amongst our people in one mind and one accord. Father, we know that your presence is here. And Father, we just ask that you administer mightily to each and every heart and each and every life this morning. Supply the need that we stand in need of this morning according to your riches and glory. That testimony would be given. Lord God. You see the hands. You know the needs. And Father, you know everything. And we just ask you to move, Lord God. Show yourself strong on behalf of each and every request here this morning, Lord God. That your glory may be testified amongst the world and, Father, amongst us as well, Lord God. And we may tell those of your glory. And, Father, we'll thank you for this service today. And, Father, we just ask that you administer into our hearts to prepare and receive the message that you laid on the pastor's heart. Father, anoint him as he delivers this morning. And Father, we'll be sure to give you glory, praise, and honor for it all. In Christ Jesus' name, the church says. Oh, 
God is so, so awesome. Go ahead. All right. Today is the third and final installment of what I've been talking about. I believe on my heart that God is telling us to get our mind, our house, our heart, our spirit back in order. Amen? God is awesome. All the time. Not all the time. God is awesome. And we know today is going to be on humility. I heard a guy say he wrote a new book called The Five Most Humble People in the World. And why I'm number one and number two. Let us sit for a minute, too. Humility. I want us to get our Bibles out, turn to the book of Micah. The book of Micah, chapter 6. If you don't know where Micah is, get out your table with God's in. I promise you it was in the Old Testament. I can help you there. Everybody got your Bible saying amen? Yeah, humble, talk about humble. Uh, we were still going to be in D.C. We're putting in a sub panel. And he got through the wiring. He said, I'm going to wire this up over here, Daddy. I said, okay, you wired up. When he got through, it was less than what I mean. It was not quite the quality I would do. So he said, that looks like a bunch of junk. Come on, I said, yep. He said, could you cut me a little bit of slack? I said, nope. When that inspector comes, you had it. He goes, okay, Daddy. This morning I was doing something. And DC said, that's not how to do that, Dad. And so I said, let me try it this way. He said, what I tell you, Dad, that's not the way to do it. I said, why don't you cut me a little slack? And he said, no. This guy way of coming around to you. The Bible says, with the measure that you put it out, you need a measure that you get it back. Amen? Amen. Micah, y'all stand for the reading of the word. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. We've got somebody, he's not here today because his mom's sick, but that new guy that's been coming, Clint, he's going to go on the, he's going on the Emmaus walk. So I need y'all guys to all be in Emmaus. I need y'all guys to, to write him a little letter. Don't have to be long. Pray for you. I hope that God does something special for you this weekend. Uh, hope God really, really lifts you up. And uh, just something like that. But I'd like you to, 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 to write those letters. And after you wrote the letters, you can give it to me or you can give it to Benny or somebody else that may have been the mass. And make sure that I give them so I can carry them with me. Plus, I need a volunteer to carry him. It's almost to run. <laughs> Not running, really. It's done. But it feels like you're going to run. Okay, so I need somebody to volunteer to carry him up there. Uh, for the for the uh, the night it's going to be April 14th. So I'm to carry you up there, and also I'll bring you back. So I'm going to carry him up there, and and because I can't be doing that, I got to be at the campground. So don't write him a letter. He's not here, and if he's watching this, clearly I just pulled a surprise. If you're not watching this, good. <laughs> now turn your TV on. Ready? You can get ready. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. He's already shown this. You know this. It's in your heart. And God didn't have to beat you with the Bible. You know this. Every somebody say, you know this. You know this. What does the Lord require of thee? Now, he doesn't require a lot of us other than the love he can put in first and other people behind, uh, uh, next to him. You know, uh, do unto those we have, do unto us. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. But here's where the rubber meets the road. This is how this is all played out. But do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Stretch forth your hand this way. Ask God for a special touch and anointing. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you, God, that you got. God, you just got it together. I thank you, God, that even though we don't have it, you do. I thank you, God, that when we can't get it figured out, you've already got it figured out. You've got a plan every time. You've got a way for us, even when we fail, you've got a way of going by your plan, even in failing, we wind up stepping up. And I thank you for it right now. That's you right now, Lord God, to help us to understand what you're trying to teach us 
in his last hours before you come back. Help us, God, to know that the answer is not in the government. The answer is not in more powers. The answer is in he that holds all of this in his hands. And that's God. That's you right now, Lord, touch. And we thank you for everything you do. Father, that nothing you said will be glory. But for you, your honor, your glory, for the edification of your body. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. 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 You can be seated. God is awesome. Tell somebody to pass it behind us. Pass it behind us. You should have us. God, God is with us. us. And, and nothing. Amen. And nothing shall be, shall be impossible. How many here love to be humble? I read this story about a pastor in a community, it's not me, a pastor in a community that finally got an opportunity to speak at a large community association gathering. He feels rather really proud that he was asked, and so he refused. Check saying that he felt it was special enough just being chosen and that that check should go to a better cause. But luckily, the person giving the check did say that they had a special fund for this money that could, that could be used for. When the pastor inquired further about this special fund, the person said, If so, we can get a better speaker next to you. <laughs> 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 I can keep that, yeah. I remember one time, me and D.C. and Daniel and Bethany, we just got Bethany, me and D.C. Daniel, Bethany, and, and Bethany were going to the mountains uh, for about three or four days during the summer, because she was a school teacher. We had to be very careful how to plan all this stuff. And, and I remember this one preacher down the road that I had known in Washington. Now, he's in Dunn, I'm in Benson. He calls me up one day, and he says, Brother, I'm having a revival, and a God has told me, you're the man for this job. I said, brother, when is it? He said, it's on Monday that you're leaving on Wednesday. So I'm going to leave on vacation. He says, I said, brother, I, I can't do this. I said, I really can't do this. I said, I've got my family's got our reservations. We've got everything going. We're going to Boone, North Carolina. We've got a hotel set up, everything. He said, brother, I'm telling you, I pray for God. And God told me that you were the man. By this time now, I'm listening. I'll be honest, I'm listening. And I said, my wife says no. He said, but you don't understand. I got down on my knees and I sweated it out in prayer. And I said, God, I've got to have the right one. And God spoke again and said, get down to the land. He's the right one. So I went to my wife and I said, okay, it's over Wednesday. Can we move it just one more day? And she goes, if you ain't do by Wednesday, you're going to have to find us in the mountain. <laughs> I said, but he said he needed me. God told him in hours of faith prayer. And so I called him up. I said, are you sure you need me? He said, brother, I know God told me. He said, besides the first four guys, turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> yep, God's got a way. Shot through the heart. All right. We're going to talk today about a subject that not everybody's happy about. They don't always want to do this subject, so we're going to talk about it, because this is the hinge. This is the foundation. This is the root. This is the foundation. This is the AC system, HVAC system. This is the plumbing. This right here, everything else hinges on. If you're going to do justice, if you're going to love mercy, in order for it to really be effective, you need to do it this way. Of course, I'm going to read this just, just, two, just two, and then we're, or maybe three, and then we're going on. Has he shown you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? That's the New King James Version. Then the New Century Version says, The Lord has told you, him what is good. He has told you what he wants from you, what to do, what is right, and other people 
love being kind to others, and live humbly, obey your God. And finally, the message says, <laughs> but it's already made it plain how to live, what to do. What God is looking for in men and women is quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. But take God very seriously. Amen. Remember, our to do this should be realizing God, realizing my vision. Let me see clearly what I need to be doing now because I promise you, the government is not going to have what we need today. I promise you. Anytime somebody speaks about God, all of a sudden people get all politically correct. Oh, no, 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 no. You're my hope. Well, you know what? I'm going to speak about God. To my dying breath. I'm going to speak about Jesus and what he's done for me. To my dying breath. And the world is not necessarily listening to them. They're watching the sermons that are preached through our actions all around them. Amen? So let's so, so watch this. Here we go. Get ready. To, get ready. To, get, ready to, get ready to take some gears here, okay? The message is profound. It's called action. This is my mandate. day. It tells us what God requires of us. Again, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. It's a call that challenges us to align our lives with the will of God. A lot of times we say, oh, God, I need this, 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 and this. And God, I believe you said I can have what I I could have what I said. If I believe you were going to give it. So here it is, God. This is what I need. Mean. Give a shot on this. That's such a misquoted, misunderstood scripture. The whole thing is, you live like God expects you to live, and you live in constant contact with Him. Then when you do ask for things, I promise you, it will be on His list. Amen? It's a whole lot better that way. <laughs> so this, this message contains three main points. We've already gone through and this one's a pillar. But this one right here is, I promise you, is the hinges. The roof, like I said, is the foundation. So, here's my answer last week. And we get rid of it. Y'all said that cloud out, Pastor. That cloud. Oh, <laughs> God. Here, here we go. Just, just read these two. Because here, here's part of what this is. This is the New Testament version. Matthew 22, 36 through 40, the Christian standard Bible says, Teacher, what command of the law is the greatest? He said to him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like, Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets begin on these two commands. Amen. The Amplified Bible. Teacher, what's the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied to him, you shall love your God, your love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. The first and the greatest, this is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. The whole law and the writings of the prophets depend on these two commands. Now I'm getting ready to show you something. And I'm just going to stop for a minute. And I want you just to watch. Just look at it. It's not a video. I'm not going to hit the start button. It's just a picture. Ready? Just look at it. What do you see? You stepping into an empty tomb and looking in the mirror, and in your reflection, you see Jesus. Whoa. Whoa. That's powerful. I actually can stop right now when you go home. Go put, go put the keys up, put the keys back in your pocket. That's where we're going home. I said, when you go home now, I saw keys start coming out. No? Don't be yourself down just a minute, right? Go ahead and turn to Philippians. I'm going to read this out of the Bible straight to y'all, which I'll read it with Philippians chapter 2.
You got your Bible, say amen. amen. You got Philippians chapter 2, say amen. amen. So you don't want to go with somebody beside you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If there therefore any consolation, there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, that literally in the Greek means in humility. Others might let each esteem other rather than themselves. Look at every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Let this mind, y'all say attitude. Attitude. This attitude be in you, which was in also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and made the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the death, even the death of the cross, the most inhumane, most humiliating way, the most painful way a person could die. That's why it says even the death of the cross. For for God has also highly exalted him and has given him a name above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every dish of power and things of in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Christ is Lord for the glory of the glory of the Father. He tells us to walk humbly. To walk humbly. Don't say walk. Walk. That's more than just the way to get around. That word walk, and I'm going to talk about it more as we get going. I'm, I'm building on this. That word walk means your path, your life, your life purpose, your life plan. Walk humbly. A lot of times people think humble means we're giving up our power, and humble means that we're submitting to somebody else. You are. You're submitting to God. But when you submit to God, you, there's no way to be more powerful than when you submit yourself to God. Humility actually means to humiliate self. Not in a negative way, but in a positive way. To humiliate self. But we're good at humiliating others, aren't we? You know, some of us actually are like hecklers. You ever been watch a club or something or watch somebody telling a comedy routine or playing songs and somebody's heckling them? That the minute you got, why don't you take the rest of those jokes and put them in the doggy bag and take them home with you? Heckler, heckler, heckler. Humiliating the person doing the job. You ready? How many times is it here? Instead of humility, you were a heckler. I don't mean you're in a club. I don't mean you're in there dancing. I mean, not dancing. I mean, you were at your job. You were working with somebody. You were at a family gathering or whatever. And when the opportunity came for you to make a positive difference, instead, you heckled. And usually when you're heckling, it is to prove whether you know or not, subconsciously, to heckle means you're trying to make yourself look better than the other person. So now, there's a difference in honest criticism and heckling. Honest criticism, criticism is when I'm trying to help you grow. Heckling is when I'm trying to put you down. Crit positive criticism will bring them up. Heckling is putting them down. So he says, I want your life, your plan, as you go through all the time. I want you to walk humbly with, this is per, can't do it on your own, it's impossible. Your, your, God, your personal, you can't do this relationship with, and your God, 
He's ultimately your power. He's going to give you strength. He's going to help you do what you really think, didn't think you could do. Help you to stand up and help somebody that you really didn't want to help. Somebody that actually tried to harm you and instead of you harming them back, you helped him. Wow. So, so instead of that, let's talk about this now. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Think about it. That's why I say it's a positive humiliation, not negative. It's not thinking less of who you are, but it's thinking of you're not you, you're not thinking about you all the time. <laughs> Over the years, I've seen guys come in and their theme song, either a family or Project and Gamble, even in churches, their theme song is they walk down was always how great I am. Things turned around. 
That was awesome. That was awesome. Heard that man? That was an awesome, awesome life. Because we were relying on his strength and his wisdom to guide us. It's about maintaining a close personal relationship with God, allowing him to shape our character and to guide our actions. So now, that's how we learn how to walk with him. But not only walking with him, look, watch this. I don't know how to speak for you. I remember when I was, when, I was, when DC Dan was little, I'd see things like that. We're walking down the beach, and I thought it was the cutest thing. Of course, DC's were big as mine, but Daniel's was like that. <laughs> Somebody asked me, how can I keep DC in clothes? I said, he's out. I sold his shoes to the circus. <laughs> the clowns, they, he had a great place. <laughs> I can't do this by myself. All about this, he said today. He said, when we come in here, he said, before y'all came in, he said, y'all should play. If you're just here to play, I'm going to be on my car. He said, if you're here to worship God, I'm here with you. That's amazing. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Very powerful moment. Connection. Maintain humility in our hearts. Hold on just a minute. I want you to, I, want you to I, I, I wrote a lot, but I really need you to see this. Humility is not about self deprivation, deprivation, or a lack of self esteem, but understanding our rightful place in relation to God and with others. It is about acknowledging that we're not the center of the universe. We're part of a larger story. God is writing. Humility begins with understanding who God is. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Wow. Is a recognition that we are not the authors of our own lives. Rather, we're part of God's grand narrative. I really get kind of jumpy when I hear this phrase. They're a self-made man. That scares me. Because if you're a self-made man, I'm going to sit down, I think I need to stand back up. And I, I'm feeling it again. <laughs> If you're a self-made man, then somewhere about I, I care was God going. Okay, go ahead. Take your best shot, buddy. Go ahead. All I think about it is when you see somebody standing strong, then this person is a person of initiative, bathed in their faith in God. There's a lot of people have faith in no initiative. There's nothing about an issue with no faith. But when you put faith and initiative together, wow! It's amazing what can happen. So now, let's just go a bit further. A little bit further. We're getting ready. Get ready, brother. Let's stay close. We're getting ready to. Humility involves recognizing our dependence on God. He says in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That means you can't do things. But if you can do it God's way, you can't do it without God being connected in there. So, so this is a powerful reminder that we're not self-sufficient. There's no such thing as a, a godly, self-made man. Amen? You think Adam Phillips said, I'm a self-made man. You know he weren't. I tell you one thing he didn't have to hear. I'm a hungry get my mama cook something for me. You can't do any better than that. <laughs> he never heard that one. She never heard that. We need God in our very existence for our ability to bear fruit, to be fruitful. For the world to see Jesus in us. We gotta have him in us if you want the world to see Jesus in us. 
Recognize that dependence on God is not a sign of weakness, but it's a sign of wisdom, and it's a sign of strength. Because acknowledge that we are not the source of our own strength. Our strength comes from God and from God alone. Just about through. I got to get down some more. Y'all don't need to lay it out of the class. Here it comes. Here comes some more. Here it is. Humility is to make a right estimate of oneself. I say it all the time, God, I'm nothing without you. I'm getting ready to go into a hospital room or getting ready to go to a nursing home or getting ready to go to a funeral home or I'm standing up there waiting for him to uh, with the family that some of the family I don't even know and I'm in there with them and I'm praying with them and I'm leading them in the service and I'm, I'm coming down the aisle and I always say, God, this has got to be me and you and mostly you. Because I can't do this without you. So, so humility is to make a right estimate of yourself. Humility is having a proper view of ourselves in relation to others. Do nothing out of selfless ambition or vanity, rather, in humility, value others above yourself. This is a call to consider our others more important than ourselves. It's called serve rather than be served, to give rather than to take, to listen rather than to speak. It's the kind of humility that's not natural to us. Not giving any morals on him because he would say, please don't do that. I'm not. But there's a work. Matter of fact, I can go through, I don't want to miss everybody because there's so many people I see you working for somebody else and taking care of somebody else like the EMS and the fire, putting our life on the line. Just, just yesterday, my wife's uh, cousin was in Virginia and she put out a prayer request. There had been an explosion a block or two down the road in a house. Please pray for everybody. That was the day before yesterday. Yesterday she said it was a gas leak, gas explosion. And I think she said four firemen died. They were doing this. They're putting others granted themselves. My fact. But Jesus says, no greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friends doesn't always mean that you give your life, but it means you put your own stuff aside to help somebody else. And when, and like I said, he's got to hit I'm not paying the Lord's love because he'll say, don't do that. But when I see Brother Wayne taking his kids to the hospital and God saving their lives and making make it a mobile again, it does my heart good. To know that somebody do that without any regard for themselves. When I see Brother Benny on the search team out there, you know, CDC, who are y'all, y'all, Brother, Brother Doug, I can't, like I said, I can't mention everybody because I, y'all, y'all do it so much. You're great at this. But when you put your life down there on the line, putting others ahead of you, God is so pleased when he sees this. Sometimes it's something so simple as going to an elderly person's house in your neighborhood and change the light bulb. When you can be watching a game or you can be some of us, get there, change the light bulb for them. Or you go in the back and you found some kittens and you pick them up and bring them in and take them to the bed and make sure they're okay. That's putting others ahead of yourself. The Bible says a godly man will have regards for his pets, for example. This kind of humility, though, that y'all got to show all the time, it's not natural. It goes against our human tendency to put ourselves first. Whoa. I see all y'all just does my heart good when y'all tell me you're ministering to somebody, you're doing something, because I know that you're reflecting Jesus Christ. You're in an empty tomb and you can look in that mirror, your mirror, and you can see Jesus. Wow. 
is precisely the kind of humanity that reflects the heart of God. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count himself equal with God, a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taken the form of a servant. Let's look at that with all of that. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. There you go. Get ready. One more slide, and then we're going to go to the end. Somebody say, <laughs> That word humility here is very special. Because I'm going to not look at the Hebrew and the Greek. And some of the stuff was translated from Chaldean and Latin. But then I like to look at the word for its meaning, which means to humiliate itself. I like to see how many times it's used and where was it used? Because that'll tell you more about that word. So the Greek word for humility is to silence. This part in Micah chapter 6, verse 8. This word for humble is only used twice in the entire Bible. Twice. So now watch. First, it's in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. It's used to contrast the outcome of pride and humility. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble, the tasana is wisdom. The second place is used. 2 Chronicles 34, 27. King Josiah is commended for his humility before God. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled to silence yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and his people because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept my presence. I have heard you, declares the Lord. So now, in both instances, the word society is associated with positive outcome. It's associated with wisdom in God's favor. So now, this actually suggests that walking humbly with God, as in Michael 6, instructs and is not only a command, but it's your pathway to blessing. Wow. I don't want to be blessed. I want blessing. I need blessing. I need blessing. I need blessing. God is working. Again, like today, I said, we're going to throw the plug out in praise and worship, but you've got to plug it in the same way. Like a sixth day, it the plug out. You've got to plug it in. It's up to you. So now let's look. Get ready. We need to be teachable. If I'm talking to somebody, I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. On this one. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But or else somebody trying to talk to them, I know, I know, I know. And I'll say, I go, I go, I go. I won't waste my brain on well, somebody going, I know, I know, well, I know, I know, I know, I know, okay, then you know. When my, when my guys will look at them, and they go, I know, Daddy, I know, Daddy, and then, okay, okay. I come out later and they're laying in their face, I'm going, I thought you knew. <laughs> <laughs> Instruct the wise and then the wise are still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. Proverbs 9 and 9. If you're going to be humble, you've got to be open to correction and instruction, even when it's on the front. Just like I told you last week or so, when she said, Daddy, watch me, I'm wearing that box. I said, was wearing correctly, said, but it looks like it. Uh, looks like junk. <laughs> Actually, it looks like crap. 
He said, what do you think? I said, yep, do like that. He said, you can cut me in that whole room. Now, don't you again, Mr. Seth. He said, or he said, you can cut me in slack. I said, I just did. I ain't cut you in slack, though. And so he changed me. Again, yeah, I just want to tell you, I don't know what kind of don't think I'm losing my mind. I'm not losing it. I don't care to tell you, I think all this stuff right. This, he goes, that's not right, Dad. That's not right. That's not right. And I go, well, huh. what do I need, Mama? And I finally, this, he said, Dad, this is the way to do it. And I said, whoa. I said, he's going to cut me any slack. He went, nope. <laughs> I said, you tough, ain't you? He said, yeah, like me, when there's fires in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They said, they said he was cutting the wires, and he didn't check to see if it was turned off, and he cut his wires over a wire, and he cut across the hot, and the, and the loose one, and the ground at the same time, and I'm working over here, and I hear, Bleow! and I smell it. I turned around, and she's going, <laughs> I said, are you all right, son? He said, I'm all right, Dad. I said, I got another question. First time, I'm all right. Dude. My heart's beating hard, but I'm all right. I said, I got another question. He said, what, man? I said, were you using my flowers? The flowers ain't had fun with work anymore, okay? We need to open the direction and instruction, even when it's uncomfortable. It means recognizing that you don't have all the answers. It bothers me to get around somebody that has all the answers. You know why? Usually the person that has all the answers doesn't know the question. That's what I know, I know, I know. Well, if that was my son, this is what I do to him. I go, really, you know, sir? No, well, you got the children, no, but you're going to tell me how to raise mine. No. I'll tell you what I do. Uh, don't be an extra man. Get there and say, you know what, I'm really going to put a hard time. I'm here with you, buddy. You make it, you, you decide what you want to do, and I'm here with you. Good, better, than others out here. Just know that I'm here, and I won't be telling you I told you so. And I don't have all the answers. I can't do this all the time. I don't have all the answers. When I was sitting in the funeral home last Sunday afternoon with the family, and this young guy had died, and I'm in there with them, with the family, and I told them right to start with, I said, okay, it's your turn, Pastor. And I got up at the three, and I said, I want you to know right now, there's nothing, nobody in here can say to take away this pain. There's nothing anybody can say to change what's happened. All I can tell you is there's a God that has comfort that's greater than the pain. And we're going to connect Him so we can draw from Him. The older I get, I discovered some two things. The older I get, number one, the better I was. Some of y'all might go and visit yourself. Well, I'm not going to about you. And number two, the older I get, the less I'm. The world's changed so fast, you better help. You better be connected with God. Let me tell you what to say and what to do and how to handle it. Finally, humility involves trusting in God's timing and God's plan. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Trusting in God's timing requires us to let go of control. That's the hardest part, letting go of control. But I've got to control it! No, you don't! I'm not there just to get better! And heal if you let go of the control. A lot of families would find healing if they can let go of the control. Surrender.
surrender it to God and let God show you. There are fires to believe that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Isaiah 55 9. I promise you this trust is not easy, but it's a crucial part of walking humbly with God. Finally, y'all say fine. Walking up with God is the basis for loving mercy and doing justice. Because of what God has done, we fully invest in healing the world around us through mercy and justice. I'm so proud of y'all. I get a chance over and over again to see y'all laying down your life for somebody else, whether it be a parent, a child, whether it be a friend, whether it be somebody in the community. I watch you all the time lay down your life for others. And honestly, it makes me very, in a good way, proud of me or pastor. Because I see you affect Christ. And if you don't want to burn out, if you don't want to flip core, stay connected. You gotta stay connected. Both we are what God proves the power and the passion for us to fully engage. He grounds us in everything, and everywhere, all the way. When I go into the heroin heat, those guys will say something like, I'll be having a group and talking to them in a group that I've got you with them. You've never experienced this stuff. You've never had a minute too long, and I go, hold, 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 hold. Number one, if Jesus come here right now, we would all be in the same level. I said, we get to the cross, we're all at the same level. By the way, I had a chance, I've had the opportunity to bless and to baptize around 12 guys in the Herald Union in the last couple of months. That's awesome. Hey, that's awesome. God right, said, yeah. And I tell you, by God's grace that I'm on the other side when you're all fixing it. And I said, Don't you think that I'm not going to do anything? I start telling my parents, Jim and Beth, and all the stuff. I tell them all the time. I'm only here to prove to you that God wants you. And I'm, I'm here. Tomorrow. There's somebody you like me having a problem with. Somebody you like to have a problem connected with. I'm not saying this is a guarantee. I'm not saying this is going to be a one, done, one and done. But I promise you, ask God for the opportunity. Don't just do it on your own. Ask God for the opportunity. And when the opportunity presents itself, We practice justice and mercy and humility. The adverb proven means to lose us away from arrogance, from being egocentric, the need to always be better than others. It is simply accept the gifts that God has placed within us. I don't have to be better than God in this. If somebody is that small in their thinking, do they got to be better than me? Go ahead and go for it. Go for it. Because my life 
And I hope I've proven this. Oh, in heaven, it's name added to Christ. Well, although he had all of this, he put it to the side and picked up where we were at. Here, I want to read this right here. That Philippians chapter 2 is the perfect, absolute, perfect scripture for humility. This is the perfect picture. This week, I've been putting challenges up there, and they put challenges up there because I put God a challenge. True humility, remember, is not thinking less of yourself and thinking of yourself less. There's a lot of young doing that. A lot. And some of you don't even know who the ones are that's been taking. Yeah. 
Lord, you reach over that bed and grab it. Pull it down. Maybe you want that. Come on, Cap. Say, get my suit back. When I walked in, he saw me. He got so scared. Last three weeks. 
spirit wants something in you. Something that you know only God can take care of. But again, he's going out to plug what you got to plug it in.
in their everyday life to injustice. Show the mercy.